So if you're looking to mount a GoPro on a car or anything where it's a one-time thing and you want it to be secure, you're gonna wanna use zip ties and or duct tape. And it doesn't need to be this fancy. You're also gonna want wire cutters. So it is as easy as possible to get it off. If you're going underneath the car, you wanna go with something pretty thick. Like this is like the minimum I would use. Sometimes I'll use these thinner ones and I'll do, if I'm trying to center, if you have a pole that is like this, then if you do like an X pattern where it goes like this through each one, then you can tighten it up and center it. But if it's a case where you just have one point and it's gonna be facing this way, you just go through like this. If it's going perpendicular, then you can just tighten it up with one. I always use the GoPro app, especially when driving, just as like a monitor. One, to be able to see your shot. It's hard to frame up a shot in this tiny little screen, but also just in case, because you never know. You attach it to a point in the car, you don't know if it flexes when you're driving. And even though this is pretty strong, if you got the car at some point where it might flex a little when it's driving, it could break this. So GoPro app is a good way to make sure you don't lose your GoPro on the street <laughs> behind you and you find out like a mile later. First off, it's always good to have a place where you can pull off to the side of the road. Still wouldn't be in danger of getting run over while trying to put a GoPro mount underneath the car. But if you are by the side of the road, use flashers and whatnot. This is a pretty good isolated place. I could take my time. This actually isn't my usual car that I drive. And it's interesting that newer cars have tons of plastic underneath them, which makes it very hard to find mounting points. And it also makes it less interesting. I've gotten tons of shots on my Volvo. And this is the first time using this Subaru and just finding mounting points is hard enough, but we'll see how interesting the footage looks. There's something about rusty old cars and their underneath sides that are just interesting. So this is the first time using this one. Let's go for this first shot. So first off, if you can avoid pulling off in some muddy area, that's always better. And secondly, make sure, swipe down, connect. Wireless connection is on. I don't know about other ones, but with the Hero 5, it always turns off. Every time I go to use it, I am assured that wireless connection will be off. And whether or not that's some security feature, I don't know. But much like in this case, I put it underneath there. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to check wireless connection. And I drove without the GoPro app. So I was basically driving blind. So you just mount your phone where you can easily see it. And uh, obviously I can't show it. And I only have two cameras on me right now. So normally the GoPro would be underneath the car and not recording itself in infinity, but you get the point. So one advantage to the Subaru is it's much higher than the Volvo. I would never get this far underneath the Volvo in this situation. Normally I wouldn't attach it to the muffler, you know, cause it does get hot but I'm not gonna be doing it for that long. And there's so few points in here to really attach to that I'm, I'm going for that.
For this show, I pair unique exterior angles of the car with interior shots, sometimes using two cameras for talking while driving segments. FYI, if I can help it, I won't rely on the GoPro for dialogue audio. I've got a Rode NTG5 and a Tascam DR70D field recorder. I save the free mount that is used for packaging the GoPro and duct tape it to my dash. Yes, it comes with these little 3M mounts. I've yet to use them. I will probably make a helmet cam someday. So while we're here, let's go do one more shot. I still have to work out a more effective wide angle sun blocking solution, which any kind of hood is gonna be useless if the sun is shooting straight into the lens. It's always gonna be better to record on diffuse days and if possible, drive in a direction that isn't conductive to lens flare. Unfortunately, I usually have places to go and can't do a fake trip in the opposite direction because that's where the sun wants me to go for a good shot. Oh yeah, and while we're at it, Take interesting establishing shots for exterior views and try to make them match up with what you're doing. Bonus shot brought to you by, you know, I actually don't like this angle, but whatever, we're doing it. Bonus shot brought to you by string. Just happen to have that hole there. Just a token vent that doesn't actually do anything. This extra shot going a short distance. A little bit out of my range here, so gonna be very careful about this. This is the side that is on the side of the road, not in traffic. This is the end. This is the third, maybe it's the second. This is the second GoPro episode that I've done. And there's this whole thing I'm talking about story and I'm not 100% sure what I should restate in certain things. But one of the things I've been stating in this trilogy of GoPro mounting episodes I've been doing is that story is important. And you should have a story, you should arrange things in ways that are impactful and meaningful to people and script things out better than I do. <laughs> I don't know what the end of this is. I, I'm about to turn it into a dirt road, so I'm pretty sure this is, I'm gonna call it the end. Okay. <laughs> GoPro app watching itself record itself. Pretty cool. I have no idea what this is based on, but this is a pretty cool effect. <laughs>